Alright, so welcome back guys, or welcome to your first time here. I'm Vision here with Wine Entertainment, bringing you guys in our video. Today we're doing my review for The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 1, Lines We Cross. So if The Walking Dead is something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would miss some more Walking Dead content from me moving forward. Now let's begin. Now we start this episode off with a training scene at the Oceanside community. Now I did like this training scene. It was very good. Now before I get into the training scene at all, I want to mention that they do these title cards in between different story arcs. Which honestly I did not like. I found them to be kind of silly and stupid. And if you like them, this is not a dig at you or anything against you. But I kind of find them to help the people that just don't pay attention it just felt dumb and stupid, so for that reason, I didn't really like those little moments in the episode. But moving on, we got this training scene at Oceanside, which I really did like. I really like how they had the barricades, and then you had the different moments of, like, the archers, the guys with the spears, and then the melee weapons. Those are really cool. I love how they used Ezekiel and Jerry to slowly release a few zombies at one time. Very, very great stuff there. Love this episode. Love the start, at least. It was very good and built up a lot of action at the beginning. Now, I'm probably going to be in the minority here, but one of the things I did not like is the slow motion with Michonne and her katana when taking out one of the walkers. It just, I hate slow-mo. just feels silly, stupid. Now, that's just me. I know a lot of people might like it, but to me, it just feels dumb and silly. I just hate it. Just, I, I don't want to see it. I'm doing it anymore. It's just, I don't know. I don't like it. But other than that, we have a great opener. Jerry and Ezekiel eventually can hold off all the walkers at once, and they break out. And we get a nice, cool walker kill scene throughout with all our communities coming together and characters fighting. So that was a really cool scene. We really liked that, and it just started off the episode very strong. Now, one of the parts of the episode that I did enjoy was where Judith was telling RJ the story of Rick. I did like that. It was a cute moment for her and Judith and RJ. I like the bonding moment and how you had Michonne listening in on the story. Very cute moment. I did very much enjoy that part of the story. I thought it was a nice little cute moment there between the two siblings. Especially since, you know, they don't probably remember. At least Judith doesn't remember her dad. So I really like that they, you know, incorporate that into like a little kind of story. Oh, another part of the story that continues on is that RJ finds a mask that belonged to a whisper while playing. Now, I'm going to mention this quickly, but one of the things I did not like about this episode was that they had RJ and Jerry's kids here. Now, the entire episode we hear, oh, we wouldn't be careful regarding the whispers. Yet you bring these kids there, and what if the whispers showed up after you crossed into the border? You put your kids in danger. So I didn't really like that part of the episode. So it just kind of felt like they didn't think things through totally. But I'm going to give them kind of a pass, but it was kind of con for me. But then we got, um, you got Aaron and Michonne who go out uh, searching with another group, a couple of her survivors. And... I like the conversation Aaron has with Michonne about how if they're the villain of another group story, it's a nice little uh, callback call to what fans always talk about. How if, you know, if our group had ended up with Negan that, or we followed Negan's story, he would have been the hero. So just a nice little kind of, you know, reference to something like that. Then we got this conversation where Aaron goes off and is a little reckless. Now, I get where Michonne was coming when App reprimanding him however I don't know I just didn't really like that scene with her it just felt oh I didn't really like it just I don't know I just didn't really like how they played that out but then they get a call from I think it was Yumiko and Magna regarding finding something in the woods so they go and meet up with her group and it's revealed that they have they found Walker Mask so I really like how that tied together. It was a nice way to end this scene. Our group at Radio's Alexandria. And we get some scenes with our group in Alexandria. Now, we got Gabriel kind of taking on the leadership role here, which I did like. And I like how they're giving him more stuff to do. And he's become more of a forefront in the Walking Dead series. Now, we get some other scenes regarding Eugene, Rosita, and Sadiq. I liked how they showed like the daily, day-to-day -day stuff with them. But if I'm being honest, a lot of this stuff I didn't totally care for. I mean, some of it sure was like fun. and But for the most part, I don't know. I, it just felt boring. I don't know. I, I like what they did with some of these things. But I feel like we could have skipped over some of it and gotten some other scenes that would have been more cooler. But 
for the most part, they were good. I'd say they're meh to okay scenes. So that was kind of a meh for me. But then you got Gabriel who comes in and awards them of the situation and calls a council meeting. So I really did like that. And we don't get to see the council meeting. So I feel like if they cut out some of these scenes, we could have gotten that council meeting. So I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get that. Then we got some scenes with Lydia. Now I did like the one with her in the school with Gracie. Now I really did like this. And I actually took Lydia's side on this one where she's like, why do I have to learn how to read? Like she's never had to do it up until now. I I did agree with her on that, but I did kind of like seeing her in that school setting. It, as much as it felt weird, kind of, it felt, made sense in some ways. So I did kind of like that scene. And we have a com a scene with her and Negan, which I really did dig where he's talking about how, you know, she needs to be careful with everything going on. She needs to watch her back before people start blaming her for things. Similar, and he needs to be careful about himself, otherwise they'll start blaming him for stuff. So I really dig that. I really like how you got this former enemy who's now kind of rejoining this civilization again, and you got this new person who's from a group who's an enemy trying to fit in. It, I kind of like the situation there. Just... I, it, it was something that I did enjoy and felt like it was necessary and we needed it. And as much as some of it felt like filler, I think these scenes definitely were needed to help establish th these two characters. Maybe they'll have a relationship later on in the later half of the season. But also in this part, we get introduced to Brandon, who comic fans will recognize who his character is. And I like how to introduce him early on instead of like having him show up a few episodes before, you know, his big event from the comics. Then we got our group coming out from the council meeting and we get connected where at the end of the previous scene, we see something crashing down to earth and we get kind of get reconnected here where we see that same scene only from the Alexandrian's point of view and Eugene rushes in radios Michonne. And then we got a nice moment between Gabriel and Negan. Now we had the seeds plotted for this back in season 8. So I really like how they went back to this where they had the two of them like having these discussions together. So I really like that kind of connection that these two characters are having over these past few seasons. And it kind of mirrors the relationship that Rick and Negan had from the comics when Rick would go to Negan for advice. And I really liked it. I really liked how they got Gabriel in that role. Filling out, filling in that role for Rick. And it just felt right to me. Then we got the scenes between Sadiq and Dante. Now, I like how they had Sadiq going through the PTSD moment here. However, what ruined it was Dante. Now, I like Dante from the comics. But I don't know what they're doing with Dante from the TV show. Because he just seems like this major tool. I get it in the comics. He had this thing for Maggie and was always hitting on her. But here, it doesn't feel like he's like flirting with people. It just feels like he's just this major tool. And I didn't like the portrayals of this of Dante in the TV show so far. I hope they switch it around and he does better than what he got in this episode. But my god, it was just cringy at best. Then we got these scenes between Connie and Kelly. Now, from what I gather from these two scenes is I guess Co Kelly's kind of going deaf. So I'm assuming whatever caused Connie to go deaf is like a genetic thing. Now, I found these moments to be somewhat okay, cute. I, I like the sister bond that they had here. The only little thing that I didn't really like here is how like the goofiness of like Connie saying like it's a superpower. I don't know. It was okay, but it just kind of fell off. So then we got this moment between Ezekiel and Daryl. Now, I really did enjoy this moment. I just like how they were talking about how things were before the apocalypse. I really like when they go back and talk about stuff like that. It just feels natural and something that would actually happen. So I really did enjoy that scene about the birds and stuff like that. So that was a cool moment. And then you got a nice scene with... Daryl and Connie, whether it's a friendship coming up or a romantic relationship, either way. It was a nice little moment there between these two characters. And usually I'm not into shipping, but I'm kind of curious to see what they do with these two. Because I think it'd definitely be an interesting relationship for Daryl to be have this love interest for once. Then we got The Return of Carol, which I did enjoy this, this part where you had this awkward moment between her and Ezekiel when she returned. I like how they did that. It was something that you would expect. So it was realistic in that manner. But then you got her going off with Daryl. And going off into the woods. Now I liked a lot of these scenes. Between her and Daryl. Like between her getting annoyed about not going to get the deer. And some other parts of this episode. 
However, for me, some of these scenes just felt like they dragged on a little bit too long with Carol and Daryl. So then we get caught up to the stuff of the satellite, and when it crashes down, of course, it ignites a fire within the woods, which could threaten Oceanside's survival. So they decide to cross the border and put out the fire. Now, one of the things I loved about the, this scene was Ezekiel doing everything he possibly could to put out this fire because he doesn't want to see Oceanside fall like the kingdom did. I love that scene between him and Jerry. Now, the one thing I didn't like about this scene is we hear at some point that they're running out of water or running low on water. Now, my question here is, how come there was no one from Oceanside like bringing buckets of water? Because they, they're Oceanside. There's water right by them. Why weren't there people left behind at the camp bringing water to them? Like, that kind of felt like a plot hole that frustrated me a little bit. I know fans will probably just ignore it. But to me, that kind of just felt like, wait, why are you saying that? You're by water. You're at Oceanside. That doesn't make zero sense. Then you got Carol, who uses Walker blood to put out the fire. Now, I did like that scene, but what killed me that scene for me was after she puts out the fire, she just throws it down. She never destroyed the brain. She just threw it down, so that's still a walker. She just, you know, stored its throat. So that kind of annoyed me there, too. But then you got the Alexandrians like Eugene and them showing up to help put out the fire. And they end up getting the fire into control. Daryl uses his, his axe to kill walkers and put out a tree that's on fire. Really, really, really cool moments there. And I really did enjoy those moments here. I felt like this episode started out slow. And it kind of it kind of picked up here at, towards the end, which I did enjoy. And then we pick up after the fact and you got Eugene who wants to gather the satellite to use for parts now I like this idea so you got Michonne who wasn't who was hesitant at first but then agrees now another thing I didn't like about this the satellite scenes was when you look at the satellite you can pretty much read what the the USSR line on it which I did not like that thing burn through the atmosphere it should not be out readable at all so i got annoyed about that i know fans will say i'm nitpicking but that annoyed me too that was like really you couldn't like you know do your research there so that annoyed me but they end up doing getting the satellite and everything and michonne realizes that daryl and carol are missing now we got earlier in the episode daryl and carol talk about leaving and going out on their own to New Mexico, which doesn't matter. But then they look out to see that the herd's gone, and I guess they decide not to go out. Now, Daryl leaves Carol alone, and then you got Carol who is just looking down at the where the herd used to be, and Alpha shows up and stares back at her. Now, I thought this is an interesting scene, but what killed the scene for me is that Carol just stands there and looks back at her. Now, she knows that if they're caught on their side of the border, it's war. Yet, she just stands there like she wouldn't duck behind some trees. She wouldn't, like, try and run or hide. She just stands there staring back at her. Now, I know fans will say, well, she's angry at Alpha or she wants to get revenge on Alpha. Okay, that's still, that's that might be true. But you'd think a character like Carol wouldn't be stupid enough to just stand there for seconds staring back at Alpha. It just made zero sense. And it, it to me, it felt extremely idiotic for the character of Carol to do. So for that, I had to take off points there towards the end. Oh well, yeah, guys, that's my review of The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 1, Lines We Cross. If I had to give this episode a grade, I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10. It wasn't that great. Had a little action towards the end, but overall, okay to meh to me. So, that's my grade. I know some might not agree, but that's where I stand on this episode. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would miss some more Walking Dead content from me moving forward. And you can go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which are linked in the About section of my YouTube channel. This has been Vision here with Blind Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.